chapter of Dragon Ball Super, the battle for Earth is about to begin. The seventh and sixth universes are about to have the ultimate martial arts tournament. And the true origins of the Dragon Balls are finally revealed in this week's chapter. This week's chapter was all sorts of kick-ass, my friends. I haven't been this hyped for Dragon Ball in a long time. Not only are we about to finally go back to the classic tournament saga, but we're also going to have some brand new characters who are going to be involved. First, let's just go ahead and talk about the rules of this tournament. It's going to take place on some nameless planet, and it's going to be between five different opponents from the different universes. And from the seventh universe, we're going to have Goku, which is just expected. He's the main character, and this is probably going to be an opportunity for him to unleash a brand new power that we've never seen before. And we also have Vegeta, which again, is another perfect choice. We knew we were going to see this guy in the tournament. This also, just like Goku, would be a great opportunity to finally make Vegeta, like, the main part of the story. Maybe he should finally win this tournament, just to mix things up a little bit. Maybe see some brand new techniques from the character. Next we have Piccolo. Again, a perfect choice and another opportunity for Piccolo to shine. He's one of my favorite characters, and he's one of those characters who's changed quite a bit over the course of the series, and you really see that in this week's chapter, especially the way he reacts to Vegeta and Goku talking about their wives. The next fighter, I think, is going to be Majin Buu. Goku mentions this, but honestly, I don't know how that's going to work, because this tournament is going to be a little different than what we've seen before. There's going to be a small, simple written test. This way they just don't get some weird, crazy monsters who are going to go against the rules. But that's exactly what Majin Buu is going to do, but maybe he's more intelligent than he's actually letting on. Maybe that's all just an act at this point. But I would still like to see Buu in the tournament, if only for the fact that I think Buu's a really cool character and he's super freaking strong. And the final fighter for Universe 7 is still a complete mystery. Goku and Vegeta don't get to make the choice here. Gohan is not going to make it because... Basically, he's just a choir boy now. He, he just doesn't have the skills to fight anymore. He's more focused on his work and on his family. Let Gohan do his own thing, and let's get someone else. And this is the perfect opportunity to finally introduce a brand new character for the series, and that's exactly what they're going to do. Beerus decides that he's going to choose the second strongest fighter that he has ever faced, and it's not Whis! Whis and his sister, Beerus and Shampa, they're not allowed to be in this tournament whatsoever. And who the hell is this strongest fighter? Are they more powerful than Goku? Are they on par? Has there literally been someone in the universe with that type of power just laying dormant for this long? Hype! through the roof, my friends! Are they gonna be humanoid? Is it gonna be another Saiyan? Is it gonna be a brand new alien species that we've never seen before? I, I can't imagine what it's going to be. I just can't wait to see how it's gonna go toe-to-toe -to -toe with everyone's favorite characters. And then we have Universe 6, which they haven't, like, really announced who the fighters are even shown, like, who they're going to be, but Shampa has mentioned that since the other team is using Saiyans, they should use some Saiyans as well, and we might see a couple of them in this arc and oh my god I cannot wait to see this could this finally be an opportunity to include those filler characters in the series like maybe Turles or Broly or even better just something completely brand new I'm really hoping they go with something that we've never seen before but even if they go with those characters I'm gonna be okay with that because in a way it can almost like make it seem like they always existed in those alternate universes which makes those movies now canon if you want to look at it like that Frankly, I cannot wait to see what the Saiyans of Universe 6 are going to be like. Are they going to be very brutal? Are they going to be the opposite of the regular Saiyans? I just cannot wait to see what they're going to do with this. And not only that, but we also get to learn a little bit more about the origins of the Dragon Balls this week. We always assumed that it was the Namekians who actually created them. And in a sense, they kind of did, but they actually took the idea from the Super Dragon Balls! That's right, the Super in the title is finally coming into play. Okay, so the Super Dragon Balls are these massive, planet-sized Dragon Balls, which when all seven of them are gathered, you can pretty much wish for anything. They have limitless power. So what Shampa is going to do is if he wins this tournament, he's going to use the Super Dragon Balls to switch the two different Earths, so that he can have the more desirable Universe 7 one, which 
A little funny detail that I never really thought about and then kind of takes some of like the tension away is that there really is no repercussion for Earth losing. Like Goku even mentions that. He's like, well, it doesn't really affect us that much if we lose. We basically just go to another dimension. But who knows what the sixth universe is like? Who knows what it's actually going to be like there if it's going to be more harsh? It honestly just seems at first kind of like they're the opposite of each other, you know, with like Beerus being thin, Shampa being fat. Whis being a boy, Vados being a girl, but that could just be the fact that they're siblings and that's just the way that works. We still don't know like all of the rules of like how these universes work. Like it's been mentioned that they mirror each other, like there is an Earth in that universe, but obviously that one's been destroyed and uh, that just makes you think about all the other planets, what they're like there, like the Saiyans and the Namekians. Is there another version of Frieza in that universe? Oh man, the possibilities. Is there another Majin Buu in that universe? So what's the rundown on this week's chapter of Dragon Ball Super? It was freaking awesome. We got some really important details from this chapter. Not to mention, we also got some action and some funny moments. The chapter actually opens up with this cool action scene of Beerus and Shampa who are having a fight because it's their birthday and apparently Beerus ate this puff puff fruit, that's what they call it, on the top of their cake and this really pissed Shampa off. So they're literally flying around the galaxy, constantly landing on different planets and completely freaking out the inhabitants and pretty much every single planet that they stop at just gets completely annihilated. It doesn't help either that uh, Shampa has this ability where he fires these key attacks which he can then control with his hand. Very similar to Yamcha. However, before the two can destroy the universe, their respective masters, Vados and Whis, decide to knock them out and decide if they're ever going to battle again, it's going to be over food, which has started this crazy tournament right here. I also love the look of, like, the ring in the tournament. It's very reminiscent of the ones we've seen in the past, like the original Tenkaichi Budokai tournament, and it also looks a little bit like the Cell Games-like tournament. It just looks really awesome, and apparently they're going to fill it out with, like, seats and vendors to sell stuff, and if they're really smart, if this series really wants to make this arc really count and feel like a classic arc of Dragon Ball, then they need to get the announcer from the original Budokai Tenkaichi tournaments to come in here and freaking be emceeing the entire fight. That would be amazing. Just to see his reactions to all of the weird aliens and crazy powers that he's about to see. Because that guy's never left Earth before. It's going to blow his mind. Or maybe they could bring in the two announcers. They could bring in that guy and bring in the one from the other world. The guy with the mushroom head. I know that was a filler arc, but still, I think that would be really awesome. I'm just, I'm so amped for what they're going to do for this arc. It's going to be so exciting. And I love the new characters. I love the prospect of these other, like, weird, evil, bizarro world Saiyans. Like, I cannot wait to see who they're going to be, what their abilities are going to be like, and how they compare to your regular Saiyans. Like I said, if this is like a mirrored version, we might see something completely different from the Saiyans. We might see some females, we might see some male Saiyans who are just complete weaklings or like joke-like characters. I'm really anxious to see what they're going to do here, especially with all the new characters. There's just so much opportunity for good stuff here. There's also another important detail about the Dragon Balls. Bulma just out of the blue creates this brand new Dragon Radar, which will have the ability to find the Super Dragon Balls, but they can't seem to find any in their universe, so they're literally going to have to travel to the very center of the universe and ask for help from this old guy who goes by the name of Zuno, another brand new character that we've never seen before, and apparently Jacko the Galactic Patrolman knows him, so Bulma and Jacko are getting ready to go on a journey through space, and this has this fantastic scene where Vegeta's like, hey, don't mess with my wife, brah. So, yeah, this chapter was freaking fantastic. I think it's the best material that's been offered from Dragon Ball Super thus far. Just all of the new stuff, all of the prospect of new characters showing up, the cool artwork, the action, the humor, just a very good read of Dragon Ball Super. I cannot wait to see how this is going to translate over to the anime version. I know when it finally gets there, that's when the series is really going to start to come into its own. This right here is how you do Dragon Ball. It's the perfect mixture of everything because in Dragon Ball Z, there were a few tournament arcs, but that was like one of the staples of the original series. By bringing that back and incorporating all of these universes and different alien creatures, the series in a way has come full circle and it's truly going to end with a bang. But if it were up to me, I'd have Dragon Ball go on forever. Dragon Ball is back, my friends! 
And this week's chapter kicked all sorts of ass, so I'm giving it a 5 out of 5. What a perfect treat on this beautiful Thanksgiving day. Before you guys leave today, make sure to tell me what you thought about this week's chapter of Dragon Ball Super in the comments section below. Who is going to be that final mysterious fighter? Is it going to be a character that we've actually seen in the series before? Or is it going to be something completely new? Who do you want to see join the Seven Universes team? And what about the Saiyans from the Sixth Universe? Are they going to be characters we've seen before like Broly or Turles? Are they going to be brand new? What type of Sixth Universe Saiyans would you like to see? And what do you want to see from the rest of Dragon Ball Super? Please tell me in the comment section below. Thank you guys for watching this review. Make sure to like it, share it with your friends, and subscribe to the channel. That way you can see all of our latest anime and manga reviews and our latest Dragon Ball videos. You can also follow us on social media. Thank you guys again for watching, and as always, stay dandy, baby, and happy Thanksgiving.